We're going to call this meeting of the Hammond City Council to order uh, June 6, 2017. Uh, before we get started, we'll have a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Uh, before that, we'll have a prayer by uh, Vice Mayor Wright and then followed by the pledge of allegiance to the flag. Yeah, you bow in between. Heavenly Father, we thank you again that we have another opportunity to meet and to conduct the business for the citizens of our community. And Father, we're most thankful today that uh, no one was seriously hurt uh, during the recent storms that came through our area, and we're thankful for all the actions and the work done in response to uh, the service outages and the cleanup. Uh, not only our own departments here in Harriman, but all of those who volunteered and assisted from other communities and agencies. Father, we're additionally thankful for the safety of everyone who participated. May we all recognize that we are truly blessed to live among the citizens who, uh, first of all, care for each other, and secondly, are willing to help each other when we have needs. Bless our meeting tonight. And each one who's in attendance. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Here. Sam Here. 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 Tim Johnson. Here. Can you meet? Yes. Sam Russell. Yes. Bonnie Wright. Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Need a uh, motion to pay salaries for the month? Motion. Motion by Councilman Russell. I second. Second by Councilman Johnson. Councilman Russell. Yes, sir. Councilman Johnson. No, sir. Floor is open for discussion. Call the roll, please. Betty Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. King and me? Yes. Sam Russell? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Motion carries. At this time we'll hear from delegation. If you would like to address council, please stand, state your name, and limit your comments to three minutes. Yes, sir. Bill Alexander, I'd like to thank the utility board for all their hard work during this time, the fire department, the street department, everybody. Everybody was out doing a good job. And anybody that wanted to complain, they have their head picked in. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Anyone else like to address council? If not, we'll go into reports. Uh, HEB? Yes, sir. Uh, a couple of project updates, and I'd just like to make a few comments. Uh, the gas main, all the gas main here in town has been installed, all the mains in board. The contractors working on services now, and they've actually started uh, in some paving work in the alleyways. So that'll be getting done here shortly. So all that's kind of kind of coming together. Uh, on Swan Pine Road, we like we still lack about 500 feet of the water line to finish that. Uh, and actually, the storm and this weather's kind of delayed that just a little bit, but we should have that completed here just shortly. Speaking of storms, um, I will say, first of all, on behalf of our employees, uh, the great work that our folks did uh, under some trying circumstances. Uh, I've been involved in utility here for over 40 years, and I can tell you that I've never seen as widespread devastation as we had uh, out of this storm. Uh, and as Mr. Wright alluded to in his prayer, prayers, we're thankful that nobody, none of our citizens was hurt that I'm aware of, or no fatalities and none of our workers. We were fortunate to have, uh, to get in some additional crews to help us from some contractors and also some other utilities. We had about 50 additional men who came and, and worked this storm, and I, truthfully, I don't know what we would have done without them. 
Uh, when they showed up, you could see the look on our guys' faces that they knew everything was going to be all right because they'd already worked a couple of days on this. Uh, but I do want to say thank you. Thanks to Chief Sitko. Uh, he was a tremendous help to us. Chief Daniels, Fire Department, always, uh, always there to help. The Street Department, Roan County Highway Department. Uh, the mayor and I were in contact quite a bit, tried to keep them updated on on what was going on because I knew he and you folks were probably getting a lot of phone calls. Uh, we had churches and, and we'll give a full, we're going to have a full report later this month out, but we had several churches that prepared meals for our crews and, and fed them. And, and in fact, these contract crews said they'd never been fed as good anywhere they'd been as they were in Harriman. So they were, they were, they were glad for that. But uh, consider where we started on Saturday, on that Saturday night with virtually the entire system out of power to uh, by Friday having virtually everybody back on with a few isolated cases. I thought it was a tremendous effort. Dudley, thank you. Dudley uh, put some information out for us and uh, so forth on, on Channel 12. Mm -hmm. That was that's great help. Uh, so just thanks to everybody. Appreciate your support. Uh, it's it's been a tough time, but these times come. And, uh, I was telling somebody, you know, recently I said, you know, you, you kind of look at the world, you see the news every day, and you think things have kind of gone to hell in the handbasket, so to speak, but, you know, then when you have something like this and you see the community pull together and people come out, <coughs> volunteer to help and all that kind of thing, it really makes you feel good about it. But at least where we live, I can't speak to other parts of the world, but we live in a good community, so thank you. I'll be glad to answer your question. Anybody have anything for Mr. Young? Like I say, on behalf of the board, as I told you all last night, uh, we're very appreciative of the hard work that your employees put in. Uh, it shows great leadership uh, from where you all are at, and uh, we, we thank you all, and I know the citizens do. Fire Department? Mayor, I'd like to go out and um, you all got the uh, round marks in front of you all. Bill kind of stole my speech here. Uh, but I'm very thankful for the teamwork that was shown during that storm, everybody working together. I mean, it was very dangerous that night, but nobody backed down, police department, street department, everybody worked together, and it was just great. And I'm very thankful to be a servant as an assistant to Harriman and work for the fire department. Anybody have anything to cheat? Thanks, sir. Police Department. Sure. <clears throat> I apologize for not having this month's steps ready for you. The storm itself has also put us a little behind on things we were doing. Um, but I will tell you that just as a forecast, uh, we did a little change in our routine with traffic. Um, I was hearing some complaints about the tickets, so we thought, let's see what, what happens. Well, I will tell you that we backed off on the tickets and the actions are up. So I will I will leave you with this comment on that, that the fact that you might be receiving complaints from citizens about tickets doesn't mean we're doing the wrong thing. So just know that, that there is a direct correlation to certain hot spots we're writing tickets that reduces collisions. There's just no other way around it. So that's just the truth of the matter. Regarding the storm, I have been I have vast experience with a lot of critical incidents, and I will tell you that this was um, a, a pretty major one. I came from the fires in California, and this was a lot like the devastation there. This was more devastating, I think, than most citizens know. I don't think most people know uh, the kind of effort and work put in. Um, Chief Daniels himself and his crew were out there actually sawing off logs with what turned out to be dull blades, nevertheless. <laughs> Uh, they were out there, HEB's guys were helping us move trees to try and get traffic going so we could get emergency vehicles through. Uh, the, the assistant police chief was out there, he brought in his, his chainsaw and he was running chainsaws with uh, DRAC out there. I mean, everybody pulled together. Our initial response was dealing with the, with the road work and I don't think anybody knew at that time just how bad the devastation was. Um, we uh, did a survey, I, I want to compliment Chief Daniels when I, did, I got a chance to get a little survey going and realized just how dark everything was. 
I asked you down to put together an instant command, and within about 10 minutes, we had a full blown instant command system running, and we were able to check every street and make sure that we had nobody that had a house in their, or a tree in their house or on their car that they were trapped in. There was lots of damage, but there were no persons found to be trapped, and I want to credit Chief Downs for running an excellent show that night on getting that done. The coordination with Heath and your office, getting us, keeping me updated, knowing how we can help doing that. And then finally, I want to say, uh, as things sort of kind of ran through my office on this incident, uh, Mr. Mayor, the support from you and going out with you on Monday and, and taking that trip to drive around and see what we had. And once we realized in discussions with Heath and, and your, your folks that power may not be on for four or five days and that was also hurting the water, uh, I think we had Red Cross established, a place established, and then rolling, we were up with a shelter within two hours. And that's a credit to the leadership of the town. So I appreciate your backing on that and everybody involved in this. Um, I saw each of you working their cells off. I saw them up hours and hours and hours. I know the chief was up for 50 hours straight. Um, most people have no idea how bad the devastation was and how hard everybody worked. And it's a compliment to you all for getting all that done. So nicely done. And I'll take any questions you have. Question for the chief. Oh, last thing, we have, uh, on the puzzle, we have now taken custody of our second marked new police car. So if you want to see them tonight, they're busy. I couldn't get one here tonight because they're out running on something right now. But uh, you'll see a new black and white SUV all around town. You'll see two of them now. So we're, they're coming in one at a time. So thank you very much for those. Good answer about the weekend. And, and yes, sir, uh, thank you for that. We're going. Uh, <clears throat> this Friday morning at 10 a.m. If anybody would like to go, it's a long drive, but Walter State Community College Police Academy, we have our four trainees graduating. The mayor and I will be there with the assistant chief and some others, and it's going to be a nice event, and we're looking forward, wow, we're looking forward to having these guys on this tree. We're short-staffed, and we need them, so we're, we're happy to have them. Thanks, sir. Special events. <clears throat> Uh, well, first I was going to talk to you all about Farmer's Market, which we opened up this past Saturday, and it went pretty well. And we're actually rolling out this year. We have a logo for the Farmer's Market, and we got these nice bags made. So anybody that comes and buys something at the Farmer's Market will be getting these while we have them. And I'm looking at trying to order more, because I think they turned out really, really well. Um, and that is, we will have it tomorrow, Wednesday, from 2 to 5, and Saturdays from at 8 to noon. And it just varies kind of depending on the season. I know Teresa came out for tomatoes, and tomatoes aren't quite in yet. Um, but they did have a lot of, um, there was beets and lettuce. and uh, Jams are great. Yeah, they had, the one guy makes jams and jellies, and another girl makes like little towels and aprons. So, and we have a honey guy. So um, hopefully we'll be getting more, more farmers and more vendors in the market. We are running a promotion where you have the first two months of membership for the market for free. Um, so we're really hoping to start growing this and getting a lot more um, farmers and vendors there so we can really make it a big, a big market. Um, Cruising is Saturday from 3 to 6 uh, down Run Street. We're closing the road at 2 and then there will be a free movie at 7, uh, American Graffiti, and that's being provided by uh, Rome State's Art, Arts and Lecture Committee, so it'll be free. Um, and we'll have a uh, barbecue and snow cone person both uh, attending the cruise and so we'll have food available there. Um, and we just announced yesterday the Cobbler Festival, um, second year we're doing it on July 29th from 4 to 7 at Riverfront Park. Uh, you can sign up to compete. The deadline to sign up was going to be July 11th. And I hope we get a lot of applicants. I think last year we had 14, so I'm hoping we can get quite just as many as that, if not more. And uh, Ray for Harriman's rolling around. Um, we've already got applications out. We've already got 15 confirmed vendors. Um, and the vendor deadline for that is uh, August the 14th. So. Anybody have anything for special events? Thank you, ma'am. Library? The um, summer reading program starts this Wednesday, so hopefully we'll have lots of children and we'll have gifts and all sorts of prizes for them. It starts at 11. Do we have anything for the library? Have we started fixing the problem we've got down there yet? No. We're working on that, Kevin. 
the uh, on the uh, water issue, uh, it probably would be underway if it hadn't been for the storms. So you made a report. We uh, did receive notification uh, yesterday morning the FEMA declaration has been declared for the area. Um, FEMA will actually be uh, here in the county surveying the damage uh, Thursday this week. Uh, so we'll be uh, meeting with them further. We've, we've been coordinating so far uh, through uh, county um, emergency operations as well as TEMA. Um, we've worked with them and put together an initial damage estimate uh, for the city of Harriman, uh, roughly $200,000. Uh, the, the eventual number uh, may go up or down from that, but um, that's uh, related to the initial response and debris that uh, has been a little bit removed going forward. Um, I don't have uh, the, the most recent numbers I have end of the day Friday, so from Tuesday through Friday of last week, we had hauled off uh, 48 dump truck loads of uh, debris, and uh, we'd expect that the same amount to be uh, ongoing for a couple of weeks uh, at least. Um, <clears throat> a couple of uh, positive notes. Uh, we uh, met with THDA yesterday, is that correct, yesterday morning, and um, have uh, been awarded a uh, home grant of uh, $500,000. Um, that's uh, something that uh, is exciting and opportunity going forward. Um, we've also been notified uh, by the uh, Tennessee Municipal League um, that they've recognized Harriman this year for their Small City Progress Award. Uh, so that'd be for 2017. I think there's may be wrong, I think there's two cities in the state that received that designation. Um, <clears throat> Comcast uh, representative will be uh, at the meeting on June 20th uh, at the workshop. Um, they'll, they'll be here to uh, discuss uh, any issues that we want to discuss, uh, including uh, franchise agreement, um, potential renewal of it. Um, we anticipate that the uh, installation of the Farmers Market Pavilion uh, will occur in the weeks of June 19th and 26th. Um, so there, during those two weeks, there may be some uh, disruption to the uh, paved parking area adjacent to the uh, playground equipment at Riverfront Park. We'll have to, uh, once we prepare the foundation, barricade a portion of that off until the structure uh, is fully installed. Um, the uh, feasibility study on the hospital uh, had, a, had a really good meetings this morning with the consultants who were doing that. Uh, I think they spent about five hours meeting with uh, various staff members to uh, discuss what potential needs for the departments would be. <clears throat> and then spent the afternoon uh, <coughs> the existing facilities so that they have some idea of what we have now as it relates to uh, what we think we would need. Uh, going forward to be able to serve um, our departments and our citizens uh, with current services as well as maybe some new opportunities. <clears throat> we uh, still have the uh, volunteer group, Team Rubicon, that is uh, staging out of uh, the hospital, uh, roughly 25 uh, individuals there. Uh, they are here to assist our uh, residents with uh, needs related to the storm damage and will probably be in the area through at least the 14th of uh, this month. Um, with regard to the uh, debris that we had been stockpiling not related to the storm, um, the company moved in uh, yesterday to start that work. Uh, we, when they come in, they may operate six days a week. We'd ask them to wait until the uh, fair closed for the year out there so that there wouldn't be any disturbance. So uh, they did come in yesterday and uh, start that process. And um, the uh, core samples that we uh, thought we would be doing a couple weeks ago on Margaret Drive in preparation for the um, 
project there uh, had to be postponed, and so that should be occurring uh, either t uh, tomorrow or the next day. Um, right now, it's scheduled for tomorrow, um, but if uh, they don't finish up, it will roll over to the next day. Um, that's all I have. If you'd like that question. <coughs> Is there anything new on the <coughs> mountain road project? I know we sent the um, authorization to proceed into the Rogers Group. I, I would have to look uh, for that and see where it stands. Um, the person that they have servicing our area has, uh, has changed. Um, Todd and Nash, who, who we work with. And, past uh, it's been, he's been moved to a different region and so uh, we haven't established the same communications yet with the new person that's been assigned to the area. Anyone else for city manager? Thank you sir. This time we're going to old business. First item under old business is discuss and possibly approve the bid to Rip Rap River Bank at the Riverfront Park. Kevin? Um, this would just be the uh, official award of the bid, which came in at uh, $38,600 for 200 linear feet of the River Bank uh, stabilization. Um, Shooting Builders uh, had the low bid. And uh, it is within the budget estimate that was uh, projected for the project for the recommended award. Who's the company again? Shipman Builders. Shipman? Yeah. Shipman. Where are they, where are they located? Uh, <coughs> Bowman Bedroom. Motion to approve the bid for $38,600 from Shipman and the Builders. Motion. Motion for Councilman Mead. Second. Second. It. Second for Councilman Johnson. Councilman Mead. No, I think we've addressed it and came in under budget, so we'll look at it Councilman Johnson. I'm happy that they're finally going to be able to get that fixed up down there. Or is open for discussion. Where are they from? They're on Bum and Danny. Any other discussion? Betty <coughs> Hodge? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Kenyon Mead? Yes. Sam Russell? Yes. Money Wright? Yes. The motion passes. One thing I was going to ask on that, Kevin. When are they from? I'm going start. They, uh, they'll be ready to go anytime. Uh, TBA has had the permit for uh, four weeks. Um, their projected time frame from TBA portion was uh, about four to six weeks. Um, that has to roll over to TDEC. Um, so I feel like the TBA permit should receive any time now. I'm trying to get additional information from TDEC as to uh, what the permitting requirement will be for them. When I first talked to TDEC directly, um, they seemed to indicate the process would be much more complicated. Uh, the TBA representative that I met with uh, actually suggested just letting them handle it and submit it and send it over to TDEC, which is what we ended up doing. He did say they were their requirements more stringent than what TBAs are, but we um, felt like sending it through that way would be better. So um, that's basically where we're at is uh, needing those permits in hand and then everybody's ready to go. Did they give a time frame how long it would take? You know, we shut the park down while they're doing it? Um, I don't. I don't think everything will be shut down. There may be some areas that will need to close while they're in there working. Um, I haven't 
out of this time frame that I'm going to have in my head. Okay. <clears throat> Next item. Discuss and possibly approve sale of surplus fire engine to Roan County. Kevin. Um, several weeks ago, council approved surplus in engine three. Generally, when we surplus an item, uh, we'll list it that deals uh, and auction that off. Um, however, the Rome County Office of Emergency Services saw that we were uh, going to sell that piece of equipment, so the county expressed interest in it. Um, and so uh, they worked with Assistant Chief Daniels to uh, look at the equipment and made an offer to purchase it directly from the city. Um, so that would be under uh, for your consideration tonight, they've offered $15,000 to purchase uh, engine three, which you have already surplus. I'd like to say on behalf of that, uh, when the uh, city manager told me about the offer, uh, Roan County MA is, is here uh, whenever we call. And uh, they come on scene with us, they're here fighting the fires with us, doing whatever we need. Uh, so that engine will still be used a lot inside our city. And I think it's better if we can give it to a, uh, a partner that is in our county than we send it out to someone else. So I thought it was a good thing. Uh, I'm glad the county's interested in it. But, uh, uh, we'll see what Need a motion to approve the sale for $15,000. <coughs> motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Holly. Second by Councilman Lee. Councilman Holly. Good. Councilman Lee. Unnecessary. <coughs> Question. Um, <coughs> there's no problem in conveying it that way. Um, for another governmental agency, you can do it that way. If it were a private party, would there not be? We understand that, but we would not have done Is that, Chief, is that a pretty good price? Yes. We uh, talked to a uh, truck broker, and they told us that we done the repairs on it. We would probably get around thirty thousand dollars. It's got over sixteen thousand dollars worth of repairs, so it kind of equals out. Any other discussion? Call roll, please. Betty Holly. Yes. Tim Johnson. Yes. Kenny Me. Yes. Sam Russell. Yes. Lonnie Wright. Yes. Motion carries. Next item: discussion possible approval. Approved board appointments. Uh, as most of y'all know, uh, Ed uh, Alexander has moved outside the city, and uh, with him moving, he was on three different boards, and uh, we must reappoint those boards. So that's uh, that's Sunday appointment tonight. Uh, the beer board, the BZA, and the historical zoning board. Uh, on the beer board, I'd like to uh, put on there Chipper Dunn. He will serve for. From July 2017 to uh, July 2021. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Russell. Second. Councilman Ryan. Councilman Russell. Motion. Councilman Ryan. No. Floor is open for discussion. Call roll, please. Buddy Holly. Yes. Tim Johnson. Yes. King and Me. Yes. Sam Russell. Yes. Lonnie Ryan. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, on the BZA, uh, I'd like to put Johnny Jones, uh, and I know there's a couple different Johnny Joneses, but it's the one that lives in West Hills, and uh, he coached basketball here at Herman for a long time. Uh, his term would be from uh, July 2017 through July 2019. A motion for Johnny Jones. I make a motion. Motion by Councilman Johnson. Second. Second by Councilman Holly. Councilman Johnson. Yes, sir. Councilman Holly. Okay. Floor is open for discussion. Call the roll, please. Betty Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Kenny Mead? Yes. Sam Russell? Yes. Johnny Wright? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, historical zoning. Uh, I'd like to put uh, Jamie Russell on there. Uh, she owns the house up in <coughs> Stalkites. I think she'd be a good representative for us. Her term would be. 2017 to 2018. It's just a one year term. Motion. Motion by Councilman Wright. Second. Councilman Johnson. Councilman Wright. Motion. 
Councilman Johnson. Yes, Doors open for discussion. Call the roll, please. Betty Holly. Yes. Tim Johnson. Yes. Can you meet? Yes. Sam Russell. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, the next board is the Temperance Building Committee. Uh, this committee was formed some time back, uh, years ago, and I think it's basically the same board that started or, or close to it. And uh, so we're just redoing it a little bit and uh, looking at the seven member board uh, Mary Holly, Dana Jackson, Pat Ledoux, Mike Dunovich, Karen Lane, Elise Porter, and Tom Coleman. And it will be for a two-year term, July 2017 to July 2019. Motion. Motion by Councilman Russell, second by Councilman Wright. Councilman Russell. Councilman. Councilman Russell. Report is over for discussion. Call the vote, please. Betty Holly. Yes. Tim Johnson. Yes. Kenny Lee. Yes. Sam Russell. Yes. Monty Wright. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next thing is uh, Mayor and Council remarks. Councilman Russell. No, sir. <coughs> Councilman Johnson. No, I just want to thank all y'all for all that work you did on that score. I mean, especially Jeremy. I heard a lot from the workers that he was really out there giving them help, a lot of help. Good job. Councilman Russell. I just uh, appreciate Kevin. Teresa arranging this uh, meeting with Comcast. And uh, so now the public knows it's a public meeting, so perhaps the basement on the team. No guns allowed. Anything else? Councilman Holly. Thank you. I'd just like to say thanks to everybody that's volunteered for the boards and committees. So, just you probably won't get that a lot, but if we are thankful for the volunteer work because there's a lot behind some of those, a lot of research you have to do. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and basically, I'm echoing the same thing uh, to every department that we have. Uh, we did see a devastation come to our city, and, and I seen us step up uh, as a team and uh, and beat diversity, and, and we faced it in eye to eye, and I think we come out on top. Uh, I don't hear a lot of negative; all I hear is positive, and uh, it's because of the employees and the leadership that, that is there. And uh, I want to say thank you. It makes my job and I know the council's job a lot easier. Uh, with it being that way, I'm sure Kevin's job. But uh, we want to thank the police department, the fire department, the street department, H U B, the county, everybody that had a part in this. It was just a, a teamwork that, that worked together, and uh, it's great to see that. And uh, we're very appreciative of the group that we have in here, the Rubicon team, uh, and for what they're doing. And uh, the other thing that I have, uh, real quick. I'm not going to hit on it tonight. I'm going to hit on it next meeting because our agenda was so long tonight. As I told you before, uh, one meeting out of the month, we're going to discuss these things hanging on the board just to make sure we're staying on top of where we're supposed to be. And uh, we will hit that next meeting and we'll go over each one of them and see where we're at and, and uh, what's the next step. <clears throat> That's all I have. New business. Discuss and possibly approve employee insurance plans for Fiscal year 18. Kevin? Well, it's uh, that time of year again where we talk about uh, insurance uh, for the upcoming uh, fiscal year, which begins July 1st, which is uh, the plan year that um, all of our policies have. And so, uh, Sarah McCoy is back with us again uh, this year. She's done a great job. Uh, in the previous years, and I think she has again uh, this year. Um, and uh, I think she's got some handouts with some updated numbers, slightly different from what you saw in your packet. Did you want me to go? 
Uh, well, let me, uh, you do your deal. A few more comments, and, and then I'm, one thing in particular I, I want you to touch on. Okay. Um, essentially, um, with most of our plans, vision, dental, and life, um, we recommend uh, without question uh, renewing uh, the proposals that have been given to us. Um, Three percent, is that correct? Three percent. Yeah, I said a two-year rate guarantee. So three percent increase, and then that's guaranteed for 24 months, so it won't vote again uh, next year. Um, <clears throat> primary thing is uh, health insurance. Uh, still think we're probably uh, better positioned to renew with uh, our company and with the plan that we have presently. Um, though uh, we do have a uh, competitor. Across the field, it has put in. Uh, when you look at it solely from a premium standpoint, uh, a somewhat attractive offer. Um, so, Sarah, can you talk a little bit about yes, sir. those uh, specifics? Okay, um, if you don't mind, I want to just back up for a minute. When we got the renewal from United Healthcare River Valley, which is our current healthcare provider uh, insurance company, they came in with a 13%. Clearly, we reviewed it, so we can't deal with that. Uh, went out and got competitive data. They dropped it down to seven percent, which was at the time we met with uh, the office here, the business manager, uh, city manager, city clerk, and Dr. Curley. I think that's who all was in that meeting. Um, and the city manager asked, "Let's go back one more time and see if you can get some additional discounts." So. That was part of the plan. We just met early just to do our initial touch up on the, the, where the rate increase was coming in, despite having all this competitive data running through uh, the insurance company, having them um, fight back and forth. Blue Cross came in with a competitive rate. Uh, and then just this past week, they came in with even a more competitive rate. Uh, so, what we got United down to was a 4%. As you might recall, and for you all that weren't here last year, we had a pass last year. We didn't have an increase at all. So, uh, when you compound our renewals, we're looking great, com particularly compared to the state plan and other plans. Cigna did come in with a plan, but they I didn't illustrate them. They were 7% uh, increase, which throws them out of the ballpark. Uh, so right now, where we are is the data went back to United. United came out with a 4% rate increase, which is phenomenal. Yes, Blue Cross, uh, which is on page two, Blue Cross uh, is a 2.81, excuse me, is a flat renewal, basically. Um, we could save $2,000 if we moved to Blue Cross. However, the plan, the plan is not as healthy as the plan that we have with United. So having said that, yes, from a fiscal standpoint, we could save a little money, or with the renewal, pay a little extra, $11,000, and give the employees a much stronger plan. So the decision you all need to make as a council is, what would you like to do? Um, and therefore, then I can take the message back to the carriers and let them make their determination. United has worked beautifully for the city of Harriman, fought hard to keep it, and the fact that it's only a 4% increase, that's unheard of. Blue Cross, on the other hand, they want you all bad. What are they going to do next year? We don't have any experience to say that they're not going to bump us up a bunch next year. It's, it's virtually up to you what you want to do. The benefits with United are better um, than Blue Cross. So Blue Cross's rate should be lower than United because it's a lesser plan. What did you say the difference was? Um, the, I've highlighted it. If we go with United, it's $11,000 more, almost $12,000. So just, you know, and our numbers are fluid as we hire and hire and lose employees. You know, that number can fluctuate. So we've got to just go with a set number of employees like we have right now on the plan. So we're talking on page one, if we go with United, 
you can project about $1,000 per month in premium. Now some of that premium is paid for by employees. Uh, it's not the straight city cost because the employees pay 75% of the dependent share while the city pays 100% of the employee costs. So it's not a true hit to the city of $11,000. I should have projected that out. Darn it, I wish I would have. Um, but it, so it's going to be less than $11,000. Do you, do you understand that concept? I, I would, uh, last uh, week when we sent the information out, we were looking at about a $4,000 a year um, savings if we went to Blue Cross versus United Healthcare. With the updated quote, that differential is, uh, is about $14,000 per year total premium. Um, part of which is paid by the employees. Um, and that's it's all covered, employees and dependents, premiums for the entire year. Based on the differential in the benefits, um, I, I know as a group, uh, we all recommended the $4,000 staying with the United Healthcare. Uh, Dr. Curley hasn't had an opportunity to see the updated numbers, but um, I would still recommend um, it's less than thousand dollars a month. Um, still reviewing uh, United Healthcare uh, based upon the difference in the benefits and <coughs> premium. So it would be our recommendation will be to review all of our plans with the current companies as presented. And just a quick snapshot on the differentials and the benefits. It potentially could cost the employees over a thousand dollars more a year in benefits to go with Blue Cross. So yes, we would save a little bit of money, but the employees would assume an additional $1,000 per year risk if we go with Blue Cross. As United to date, are they the ones that stayed at 4%? Yes, interest? sir. Is United the one that stayed at 4%? Yeah. Yes, they started out at 13 and we chiseled them down to 4%. That's, that's good. That's real good. That's great. And, and that's because they didn't raise the rate last year, that's just not, that's not just four percent over our rate twelve months ago. That's four percent over what we paid twenty months ago. Yes. So, so the employee benefits are essentially the same. No, the benefits with Blue Cross could potentially cost an employee a thousand dollars. I understand that, but with with uh, if we were near with United at the four percent increase, it's the exact same plan. Exact same benefits, same company, that same you network, did. everything that we've got. But I'm looking at this, both plans are about look about the same as far as deductibles. Um, they're, they're, they vary if you look at the out of pocket costs. That's where the differential comes in. So after one meets, the, so let's just use a claim. If we have a claim of ten thousand dollars starting July one, and we're worth united, that employee is going to experience. Um, the $2,500 deductible, of which the city pays $2,250, because we have the HRA in there, all right? Um, and then the employee is, the, those, for the rest of the year, everything's paid at 100% because the out-of-pocket is at $2,500. It's a great plan. If we were to go to Blue Cross, that varies, that changes. Um, and part of that is because the prescription benefits are going to change, even though they look similar. Drugs that are in a current middle tier could go to the high tier or vice versa. We could have some changes there. Plus the fact that that employee is going to be out of pocket up to five hundred, uh, up to $3,000. So after that $2,500 deductible, of which the city pays $2,250, the employee has to meet the additional amount. The other differential is with United, we have a huge network. With Blue Cross, the network is their S yes. network. Yes, it is a large network, but it's not their largest network. If we would have picked Blue Cross's largest network, it would have cost us 18 to 20% more. So, so if the employee goes, goes out of network, uh, the plan we got now is, is better for them. 
If the employee were to go out of net, you're talking totally out of network. I just look at some routine services here. Uh, yeah, right now the the yes, you're seeing that 50 percent versus 25 percent. Absolutely, the employees are going to experience if they were to have a claim outside of the routine office visits or prescriptions or maybe an emergency room copay. If they were to have something more significant, you never know when that's going to happen. It could be an MRI, it could, it could be a million different things. Employees are going to be in a much better position with United than they would be with Blue Cross, whether they're in network or out of network. They're going to be in a much better position. Sir, what's the possibility of an employee um, having a situation where it's going to cost them a thousand dollars more to um, actually, with our HR, HRA, as you might recall, and for the councilmen that were not here when we implemented that, that is an IRS allowed provision whereby the employer can pay part of the deductible without it being a taxable event for the employee. And we did that to, so we could raise our deductible, but so basically self-insure and give the employees a better deductible than what we could afford. I mean, it would cost us a fortune to have a $250 deductible, which is, in essence, the net amount that the, the employees experience in the insureds. Um, to your question, uh, Councilman Wright, we presently had over 8,000 HRA claims for the past year, 8,000 that we paid out. So it's and that's a consistent number. It's different people every year, but we're we're consistently paying out as an employer since 2011. The total we paid out is 72,000. For well, last year, we paid out about 8,000, 8,500. Um, so yes, it can happen, and it can happen quickly. And there are situations that are ongoing right now. We have a really healthy group here, a great group um, from a health perspective. But there are some situations where somebody might need an MRI or a CAT scan or, you know, they, they're up coming with some, some back or knee or whatever. There, those situations are going on, so they will experience that increase effective July 1. Let me ask you a question real quick. Um, and I, I'm a little confused, to just be honest with you. Uh, and I sit in on the meeting and kind of had it understood until today now I'm, I'm, I'm sorry reverting by it well I, I hear you saying we could save fourteen thousand dollars for go to blue cross i'm saying it's going to cost us eleven thousand more to go to stay with the plan we're at so is that fourteen thousand savings it's four, fourteen thousand savings against what we would pay for the united health care plan renewal it's not fourteen thousand dollars savings versus what our current rates are but what I'm saying is, it's going to cost us eleven thousand more dollars to go with United. <clears throat> From what the front page says, correct? That's uh, correct, Mayor. And it yes. would save us fourteen thousand dollars if we went with the cross. Actually, if, if you look at the differential, I think what the city manager was saying is, if you look at the differential between where Blue Cross is and where United is, effective July one there's a $14,000 spread. Is that 14,000, is Blue Cross gonna give us a $14,000 discount from present rates? No, it's only about a 2,000. We could, if we went with Blue Cross, we could actually save $2,500 a year um, versus going with United Healthcare, uh, which is an increase of, uh, and we don't know exactly what amount of that is going to be pushed over to the employees and what amount of that's going to be pushed to the city, correct, out of 11,000 increase. I could do some quick numbers, like real quick. It, I would, just looking at this and trying to do some math in my head, I'm thinking that the net cost to the city is going to be around, if we stayed with United, probably about $8,000 maybe, because there's, we have so many people that are on family plans and those employees pay 75 percent of that the city only pays 25 percent is that monthly the total rent right there the in that little block right above my life i'm sorry is that that's the monthly cost so it's about 204 dollars a month more the employee will take without the different employees that get 
so here's a here's a quick way to look at it. The current premium for an employee is 385. Let's just round it at that. If we were to go with United, the premium will be 400. So we're talking 15 dollars per month per employee. We are sitting on 52 employees, so 15 times 52. That's what it costs the city right there. You may want to add that up in that little. Is employees happy with the insurance we have? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, they, we can. Is the prescription plan they've got now? Is everybody happy with that? Mm -hmm. That you know of? Yes, actually, we've had we had an employee that retired from the city, and when we were on Blue Cross prior, um, that employee had some services rendered, and it kept. And it was working out fine, except he was getting a runaround from his physician. You know, you need this, that, and the other. And so he picked another physician in the network. And this is not a reflection on Blue Cross, but it's a situation that occurred. So when we moved to United a couple of years ago, he was the first one to go, wait, let's hold it. I've been going through all this process. Now i got to find a different doctor. He, within a month, said that's the best thing that ever happened to him. Um, and we've had a lot of services rendered under United. And the employees have my phone number and call me. They call the city clerk. I don't know if they call the city manager, but they call me because they have the right to do so 24 hours a day, um, whether they be EMS, uh, fire, police, or a regular Monday through Friday employee. I don't get complaints at all. Uh, they're used to it. It works well. Chief and Daniels, are, is your department good with it? Overall, yes, Mayor. Uh, we haven't really had no trouble. Uh, I used to have the family coverage, uh, but my wife has interest now. I dropped the family coverage, but overall, the United Healthcare has probably been the best for us. We had uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield before, and we had uh, numerous issues of getting stuff taken care of, but United Healthcare has been the best for us so far. I'm absolutely good with it. And we're going through some things right now, and we've had Blue Cross having problems, and I'm, I'm loving the care we're getting right now. Please don't take it. So we're having less problems across the board. And it's cheaper out of pocket for the employee. And it's you've good. got a wide range of providers, Absolutely. so they won't have to drop out and to go to another network where they'll charge you more. Absolutely. Now, if we went with Blue Cross, the biggest confusion there is remember, I told you we have the S network, and there's also the P network. And the S and the P doesn't have any name in particular. Those are just what Blue Cross calls them. We would have the S network. If an employee or an insured, a family member, were to go to Blue Cross to a provider and say, do you have Blue Cross, do you take Blue Cross Blue Field? Yes, I do. Great, they go in and guess what? What if it's not an S provider and it's a P provider? It becomes out of network benefits. How do you explain that to an employee? It's horrible. Um, me personally, I like the plan you've got now. I mean, it may have increased some, but the trouble you're going to save from switching to another, like Blue Cross, I mean, that's just my own opinion. Are you making a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. I'm staying with what you got. Motion to stay with the United Second. second. Uh, motion to Councilman Johnson, second Councilman Me, Councilman Johnson. I think you stay with what you've got, because if you're not having any complaints and everybody's liking the service, you might have a few hiccups, but overall it should be good. My rough math is 775 a month the city of Bay Cool. Any other discussion on United? Call please. Betty Holly? Yes. Tim Johnson? Yes. Can you meet? Yes. Sam Russell? Yes. Fine. Yes. Motion carries. Now can I have a motion to stay with Delta? For dental vision. Dental, uh, dental only. Dental only. Yes, and there's a big difference in the plan designs between Delta and Blue Cross. With Delta Dental, we have the best plan available. Uh, we have a $2,000 annual maximum, and it includes orthodontics. Delta Dental is the premier carrier in the state of Tennessee, not the least expensive. Blue Cross came in with an incredibly competitive bid. The deductible is with Blue Cross is $50 as opposed to $25 with United. And remember, we want people 
going to the dentist because so many diseases can be recognized early on and if we raise that copay up 50 bucks that's a lot how many what how many hours does an employee have to work to pay the, the difference in $25 for that small amount on a two-year rate guarantee with the premier carrier in the state of Tennessee I wish I had those benefits Motion by Councilman Wright. Second. Second by Councilman Russell. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Russell. Yes, sir. Pulls over I would Hold. like to, I would like to say if employees, if y'all know of any that in your departments, let us know if this is not working so when it comes up again, we'll know in advance to say, Sarah, there's something better. I'm all over it. I, I, I check the entire You're doing a great market. Job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I appreciate y'all so very much and because you could go a lot of different places, but I guarantee you that I I dive into this, um, not just for the city of Hammond, for all my clients, but it, it, you all are a key account for me, and I greatly appreciate it. You've done great, even though I just met you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll continue to do so. Call please. Betty Holly? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Can you meet? Yes. Sam Russell? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Motion carries. Is there another insurance we need to be talking about? Um, we need to renew the vision and uh, buy land. Those are in a rate guarantee right now. Okay. So we're good. We're good to go on those. So the mayor's not going to have to sign anything? To no. We'll, okay. They'll just pass through. Right. Um, and again, this is, we don't like talking about life insurance. Um, but the life insurance plan that we have in place here, we do have an added benefit for our firefighters and police officers. It's called the line of duty benefit. It's very important. Um, I do this for all my union firefighters in St. Louis. If they have an injury or, you know, the other that we don't want to talk about, um, there is an added benefit for them to pay out. That we're not paying for in premium. Yeah, I guess we are paying for it in premium. We could get a lesser premium, but we're not going to have that benefit. And these people are on the street day one, and we protect them on day <coughs> one. So I, I think that's important to know. That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your hard work. <coughs> Next item discuss and possibly approve a public safety committee. Uh, Kevin, we discussed this a little bit uh, last month when he was out of town. And, um, basically, it's just in discussion. The council was, was looking at, uh, we, we know in the uh, charter that there, we have no more boards as far as fire police and things. And, and I, I don't think that's what, from what I, what I gather, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something. Uh, an in-between with us combining maybe the fire and police uh, a committee sort of like the rec committee that is there to uh, listen and, and help the process move smoothly and, uh, and not particularly lay all the burden uh, at your feet or, or whatever but that's kind of what they was looking at uh, and that's about as far as we got uh, we held up uh, to you got back in town and uh, I just want to say that Whichever way the council decides to go, I, the committees have no power to hire, fire, micromanage, tell anybody what to do, how to do, or anything like that. They are basically an advisory committee that would come back uh, to this council and uh, advise us as to which direction they would like to go, or, or they would go see uh, city manager and uh, and talk to him. But uh, as far as them coming and doing anything with employees or, or department heads, that's uh, that's not what we're looking for. And, uh, just want to make sure that we're all clear on, on what was looked at. Did the council have any comment on? Do we have a problem with that, that we know of today that uh, people not communicating with us or the EU or the manager of safety issue? I don't know that, from from me personally, uh, I don't know there's, there's a lack of communication. I think that what it is is, uh, what I see is, is when you're joining the two biggest departments in your city, yes, and one, uh, and, and have one department head running it. I, 
I think it's good to have about two or three councilmen that say it as an advisory committee to kind of watch that smooth uh, flow uh, that we want to see. And I think that it gives the employees a committee that they will come into instead of coming into the full board of council and saying, hey, you know, we don't feel like it. It, it gives them a little bit more. Although they still should be coming to Kevin uh, with what's going on. But I think that's what we're kind of looking at as far as, uh, and it gives the chief somebody that he can go to and say, hey, you know, uh, Kevin, I want to buy four cars or I want to buy a fire truck. And then Kevin comes in here and he throws it at us. It's, it, it's a lot easier if you've got two or three council that's sitting there and they're looking at it. And when you come to council meeting, the councilman will say, what's the committee thing? And the committee gives a recommendation uh, along with Kevin's recommendation. I think it goes a little bit more smoothly, but it, it's whatever the council wants to do. I would agree with you because it just, it just came up with uh, the planning commission. And when you have somebody on there that can help state what was coming out of the meeting, it happens that way with the beer board. If they're wanting to come in with a change to the policy, we've got board members on the beer board so they can help explain it out on what the process, because some of that stuff could be going on for maybe two, three, four months meetings. You know, like if uh, the chief, just like you mentioned, like a car thing, it could be something that's like, hey, what could we do? How could we raise some money to get the cars? And anyway, it, we have it in the other departments too. So I, you know, and it is helpful. I believe have somebody that knows what's going on when we're having a meeting that can speak to it. And and the reason I didn't ask for a, a motion to approve it. There's really nothing to approve yet. Uh, before before we move forward, we'd have to have some kind of bylaws that was drawn up um, by the city manager and the uh, city attorney but as to how that board, or how that committee, just like we did with the rec committee, how it would be functioning, the members would be on it, uh, and uh, and I think that you know should should come from uh, the city manager and the council as to how you want to draw this committee up if you choose that that's what you want to do. Well, I think in the uh, case of the Southern Recreation Committee, for example, I, I think the biggest benefit there has been uh, establishing a chain of communication between uh, the residents and volunteers who are users and participants of the program uh, and um, the department director um, to, to get regular feedback, to get assistance, to, to establish expectations of, of what the um, the taxpayers and the program users uh, desire to have and so we can set our expectations appropriately um, whether it be for facilities operations and so forth um, and so I think there's definite benefit um, particularly from, from that standpoint I think that does flow over into um, if if there's a particular service or facility citizens would like to have that we don't currently have, then this this is a way to um, get feedback uh, from the community uh, and, and, and to set the expectations from the standpoint of um, cost and timelines and things of that nature, uh, as well as the operational policies going forward. Yes. My my from the standpoint of this, my question would be until we have permanently established the direction uh, for the two departments, um, I kinda of think maybe we need to make that decision first, uh, as to whether they're gonna be officially combined or not, and then have the committee reflect what that final decision is. Uh, if the two departments uh, ended up not coming together, you might rather have two smaller committees as opposed to one larger committee. Uh, 
question. Um, no, I mean, I agree with what you're saying about waiting, but I mean, even before that, we talked about it. And it, it all just goes back to, you know, a lot of things without those two departments having anything, we kind of, you know, police department decides they want to try to save money or use drug money to buy enough long rifles to be in the car. Fire department on turnout gear and stuff like that. So it actually kind of helps those departments out when they have somebody that's going to be, I think in the past always has, we always look to fire board, police board, you know, you all recommending it. And whether it's, you know, they get a little bit more information because they can find out from chief and chief like a lot of stuff we don't need to hash out during the meetings like you know really what's the purpose of having that and you know they'll know so it might be a quicker answer for me to listen to Lonnie say yeah I was on, I'm on the HUB board and he can tell me yep the deal's right on the money on that so I you kind of look at that you know just the I do anyway that's just my thoughts on if we have it. Um, it just can be a little bit of help. What do we need to do to go ahead and set in motion making the Bible? Okay. Make sure we join the two groups. I mean, if you want to set bylaws, I mean, you could. Uh, Primarily, how many members is it going to be? What's the composition going to be? Um, it would be the first first thing that you need to decide, and then you work it from there. I mean, it's not on the territory. We just did it. With and I think we do it the same way we did the reg. Maybe. Uh, Kevin would start drawing up something and he sent us emails here in the rec committee to see what we thought about about how many members and, uh, and then he'd done a rough draft and uh, we kind of all looked it over and then uh, it was brought before council to approve when it was ready and, uh, and you, you probably could go ahead and, and do that and if these departments don't combine the only thing you're going to really change is the number. You may not want five people or seven people on a fire committee or a police committee, where you might want seven members on a public safety committee because it's a bigger department. Uh, but the, the scope to me would be for <coughs> outlet for fire and police. I don't, I don't see it being a whole lot different. But I, I would say right now at this point is just. Uh, would give Kevin permission to start working on uh, a, uh, something for us to look at and uh, get with council and kind of see what numbers uh, you know we're, we're looking at as far as members and then draw up a something and then when this goes, we're ready to put it into effect. So you will have like two or three council and maybe a couple of citizens on it. I, my personal opinion, I think you want at least, I, I was looking at maybe if you did a public safety, you're looking at maybe a, 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 a either a five or a seven member board. If you do a seven member board, I was thinking you'd do probably uh, three council members and four residents. Uh, and uh, if you did a five member board, you'd probably do <coughs> two, two, three residents and the executive uh, or the City manager would be a chief uh, ex officio member of the committee. Uh, but that's the, the numbers, is just depends on what you all want. No fire board and police board. Uh, police board have two council members and the mayor. The mayor was a vote member on, on both boards, fire and police. So you had three members on, on those boards, but you had no residents. It was only made up of council. I think this committee needs to be made up of residents. Residents is involved in the police and the fire, not just one. And, uh, 
and, and there's rest it's out there that, that is involving both that uh, has said they would like to sit on this committee. Uh, you know. They're around it daily helping them and everything probably. So they know the in and outs of it. So that would be a big benefit I think. Having some residents on it. So is everybody okay with Kevin drawing up some, start to draw up something and, and get with us and just kind of the same page. Mm -hmm. And it may come and, and we draw it up and bring it in here and it might come over. Is there any advantage to having someone else do it? Yeah. I think what we probably do is take the format that we use for the direct committee. Um, <coughs> a little bit, send it out to the city attorney, send it out to the uh, departments uh, that will be affected by the committee that will fall under the subject matter, um, get their feedback. Um, we'll incorporate that into a draft and send it out to the uh, council for you to take a look at. So, uh, I, mean, I think there'll be more parties involved if we work through it. Have questions about public safety committee. Anything else need to come for this council? Nope. No. Yeah. Thank you all again. Appreciate you. Okay. Uh, the floor is there. Yeah. Okay. He yielded the floor to you. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, go back to this health insurance for just a second, particularly for the two council who were not with us through this whole long process that we've had since 2010. I think it's important for the city council to recognize that when we made the move from the state plan to go to an independent plan, like we've done, um, that we've saved oh, almost one million three hundred dollars by doing that. So it's good. It's doing great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to second. All in favor. Thank you.